Today, our scripture reading and your hearing will come from the book of Ezekiel. Can you turn to it or turn on to it? Chapter 37. Verses 1 through 14. I have ministered from Ezekiel 37 before. But God has given me the same word with a fresh revelation. When you got it, please say amen. And the word reads in the New Living Translation, The Lord took hold of me. And I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones and covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Then he asked me, this is God asking Ezekiel, son of man, that's no gender. Can these bones become living people again? O oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says, look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones. Then skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies so that they may live again. God wants to speak to some dead and dry places today. So I spoke the message as he commanded me, and breath, breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, we have become old dry bones. Our hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore, prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Oh, my people, I will open up your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, oh, my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken. And I have done what I, what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. Father God, I just want to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for your sovereign presence. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in our lives today. Father God, before we go any further, God, Father God, we ask that you search each and every heart right now. And Father God, when you press upon our hearts, if it's any sin that's found in our lives, if there's any iniquity that may be found in our hearts, Father, we ask, oh God, that you please forgive us. Father, we ask that a fresh spirit of repentance fall upon your people, God. Father God, give us the strength, oh God, and the will, oh God, and the mindset to turn away from what's not pleasing in your sight, God. Father God, we want to live for you, God. We want to do things, oh God, as accordingly as you call them to be, God. So, Father God, we thank you, God, as you dress us, oh God, in your spirit, oh God. That we are a people, oh God, 
And no matter who we are or where we are, God, you came to touch us in that condition that's a dry place, God. Father, we ask today that you breathe your Zoe on your people, oh God. That you breathe life into your people, oh God. And Father God, there may be any place in our lives that is dry, a place that has not been touched, a place that is off limits. Father, we ask God that you touch that place, oh God. We ask that you breathe on that place, oh God. Father God, so that we can stand up like we once stood, oh God. Father God, we can have hope again, oh God. Father God, we thank you for a spirit of rest restoration that may fall in our lives oh God so father God we thank you Lord we trust you and now God I ask that your spirit fall on me and that you anoint me to preach your gospel your gospel father hide me today within you God father God I decrease because it is what I choose to do so that you may take full reign of what you're about to say and do so, God, I ask that you just have your way, God. Father, we ask, God, this in your darling and majestic and precious Son, Jesus' name. If you all agree with this prayer, let us all say amen. You may all be seated in the presence of the Lord. Before I go any further, I would like to give an honor, and I almost slipped up on this with my wife. Please forgive me. I caught in the spirit. I didn't even look at it. I just felt it. So I would like to just honor my wife. This year, we will be celebrating 22 years of marriage. Amen. <laughs> and I would like to say, fortunately, I won't say unfortunately, that our anniversary falls on my birthday and Father's Day. So our anniversary always overshadows now. Thank God for that. <laughs> Amen. Okay, let's get right into the word. The title of the sermon today that God placed in my spirit, and I heard it through our praise and worship. I heard it all this morning. In his presence. In his presence. There are many times in life where God will test us. The test come to locate our condition. There will be times that God will show us that he is Lord. Our obedience is truly determined if God is Lord in our lives, in order to get direction from God, we must submit to his will and not our own. In order for God to instruct us, we must follow in his ways and not our own. In order for God to direct and order every step, we must stand on the word of God and not the word of what people and man say. Amen? We must put our total trust in him. So that the plans he has for our lives will manifest. I'm going to bother you for a quick second this morning. Can you look at your neighbor to your right? And with all the exuberance that you can muster, will you tell them, I want direction from God? Can you do it one more time? Look at your neighbor to your right and say, I want direction from God. Now, we're not going to leave your neighbor on the left untalked to. So can you look at your neighbor to the left and tell them, I want direction from God. Amen. So today I'll start by to tell you, brothers and sisters, you are in the right place. There are places that we must go that only God can carry us. And our response will determine the outcome. There are places within us that God wants to touch but we must submit to him, granting him full access to whatever is dry in our lives. When God touched dry places, there will be instructions to follow. This lead me, leads me to point number one, carried by the Spirit. How many of us know that we can do nothing apart from the Spirit of God? Ezekiel, in the beginning of this text, was carried by the Spirit. God put him in the middle of the valley because he was going to give Ezekiel a revelation and expose him to a situation. It's something about valleys that God just pulled me to. See, we focus our attention so much that sometimes we fail to give God the response that he's looking for. So when God leads us into a place... 
to show us something. And we see what we're looking at. When we're looking at that situation, do we see it through our carnal eyes or do we allow the spirit of the living God to look at that situation? He who has an eye to see, let him see what the spirit of the Lord is trying to show him. The Lord asked Ezekiel, son of man, can these bones live? I'm asking you today, son of man, put your name there, whatever your name may be. Pastor Champ, can these bones live? Brother Barry, can these bones live? Brother Dakota, can this situation be turned around? Ezekiel responded by saying, O sovereign Lord, even though he was in the valley of dry bones, even though he was looking at a hopeless situation, he responded, O sovereign Lord, you know. Oftentimes we try to use carnal means to fix a dead situation. We try to use fleshly means to fix a spiritual brokenness. It's trying to put a peg, square peg in a round hole. It don't fit. But Ezekiel had to be in the spirit to give the response that God is looking for. God was looking for a response. And if God would have asked you and I, can these bones live? With your spiritual imagination, take yourself in the valley and imagine dry bones all around. And God steps up to you and asks you a question. Can these bones live? And when you assess the situation, when you observe what's going on around you, you know the answer to that, but you don't know what God knows. Because God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. They are higher, says the Lord. Ezekiel said, O sovereign Lord, you know. Can you imagine a situation where God was testing you to see if you would be able to give God complete control and total control over the situation? Ezekiel was under complete submission to perform the task the way God wanted him to. Ezekiel was in the middle of this valley, and he could have let this defeat him for one second. He thought he was alone. But through the Spirit, he was able to obey God's command. We often find ourselves in the middle of a valley. Take a second to think if God had came and placed us in the middle of a valley. From a fleshly standpoint, we could not see our way out. From a fleshly standpoint, we would not believe that God is a miracle worker. From a fleshly standpoint, we, not, we would not believe that God is a way maker. From a carnal standpoint, we would not believe that God is truly light in a dark place. From a fleshly standpoint, we not, not believe that God can restore us. From a fleshly standpoint, we would not believe that that situation that I'm in, that I can come out of it. We often find ourselves in the middle of the valley. Right now, some of us are in some valleys that no one knows about. Selah. Some of us are going through some things and only you and God knows. Let me help us out. The only way to give the proper response in the valley, you have to be carried by the Spirit. When we walk by faith and not by sight, when we see by faith and not by sight, when we have faith that won't quit, you have to be in the spirit to prevail. You have to be in the spirit to come out of what you're in. Amen? God, for some, will allow him to infiltrate some things, meaning give him control in the valley. You will not be able to come out of the valley of long. Some of us are stuck in some valley situations. Some of us have been there for a long time. And this thing about this valley that Ezekiel was in, 
when you're talking about bones, the bones are dead. The bones are dried up. Could you imagine how long it takes for a bone to dry up? So this situation or these situations that I'm talking about today, these are things that we have been dealing with. Not today, but for a long time. Some of us are stuck right there in all that. But the only way out is our sovereign Lord. We have to call on him and give a spiritual response to our valley situation. God is waiting on our response. How are we going to respond today? Will you and I let the spirit carry us? God does his greatest work in the valley. We all know that saying. When the Spirit of the Lord really wants our attention and wants to see something, he will take us into a valley. The thing about a valley, it is a low place. It is a humbling place. It is a place of the unfamiliar. It is a place of the unknown. It is an uncomfortable place. Amen? It is a place that we have to absolutely be dependent upon the Lord. This valley here is not just a physical valley. God will put you and I right in the middle of it. And the question is, how will you respond? Our response has to be done in the spirit of the Lord. There is no other way to come out of the valley but through the spirit of God. We are right in the middle of this. When we fix ourselves or find ourselves in the valley, we will talk to ourselves and ask things like, how did this happen to me? We will ask ourselves, why me? We will ask ourselves, how did I end up here? We will look around and see others passing us up and passing us by. And we will still see ourselves in that same position. We can be in a place and not acknowledge that we are there. We can be in a place of denial. We can be in a place of regret. We can be in a place of shame. We can be in a place of hopelessness. We can be in a place of embarrassment. We can be in a place of dysfunctionalness. We can be in a place of disconnectedness. We can be in that place of sorrow. And we are living with it in that place of denial. We are living with that place of regret. When we do things, can we do them and not do them with regret? Can we do them and not be in denial about it? Can we do them and not be shameful? Can we do them and see that we're not dysfunctional, but we're healthy? No matter what, if we don't confront what has been exposed, then it won't change. The valley is a place where fear can overtake you and I and can set in. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Do you know that even though you got hurt back there, even though you made that mistake back there, even though you fell down back there, even though you were dropped back there, even though it happened back there, and back there I'm talking about your past, back there I'm talking about your yesterday, your yesteryear, your yester decade back there, even though it happened back then, yea do I walk through that place, it was not meant for you and I to stay right there he said I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, so when you're going through some things, you're supposed to go through them and not stay there, so even though you find yourself in a place of persecution you find yourself in a place of affliction you are not to remain, dwell, inhabit that place. You're supposed to pass through. It was good when I was afflicted. You were not meant to be trapped or reside in that place. Oh, you were not meant nor designed to stay in that state of brokenness. We were supposed to go through and then get to the other side. We were supposed to go through and get to the other side. Ask yourself, are you still in that place? Or have you passed through and made it to the other side? This is the in-between when you're in the valley. This is when you're at the point of no return when you're in the valley. This is the turning point in the valley. And that's not even the best part. 
David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thou art with me. So no matter what valley situation you in, you are not alone. No matter how long alone that you feel, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. No matter when you look around and all you see is yourself, you are still not alone. No matter when you look around and it feel like nobody is thinking about you, it feels as if you have been forgotten about. It seems as if you have been disqualified. It seems that you are so far from rejected, there is no way to reel you in. You are still not alone. Old David was in that valley of the shadow of death. Have you been in that place when it felt alone? I stop by to tell you you were not alone. Have you been in that place where you felt like God forgot about you? I stopped by to tell you he did not forget about you because he was right there. He was breathing life into you still. He was still trying to get your way to figure out how I'm going to come out of this, how I'm going to come through this. But Ezekiel showed us how to come through. You have to do it in the spirit. But if you're still in the valley, I got a question. Are you in the spirit or are you in the flesh? Because you have to come through. And if you're trying to figure your way out or what you're in, then you're not in the spirit, you're in the flesh. It's time for you to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So you can come out of what you're in. We are not meant to remain in the hurt of the failure. Dry places is my point number two. Many of us have found ourselves in dry places in our lives. We have to deal with these places that we don't want to touch or that nobody knows about. God wants to meet you right there. God wants to meet you and I at our point of need. We've heard people that say, come as you are. It's not your physical condition, but it's your spiritual condition. God wants to get into dry places in our lives so that he can bring clarity. God wants to get into dry places in our lives so that he may heal us, so that he may deliver us and set us free. Because we know the Bible says he who is set free by the Son is free indeed. God wants to get into that dry place and heal. What's your dry place today? Where is your dry place? And then, how long have you been in that place? We have allowed a part of us to die before it's time. We have allowed a part of us to die prematurely. We, this part of us has caused us to be dysfunctional in our lives, and we don't even realize the effect it has on us. We have never dealt with that stain oh, on our lives, that dry place. Oh, this is an eternal wound that we suffer from. We have never dealt with that wound even though it happened in our past and it is affecting our present and we can't get a hold of our future because the wound is still poking us. Oh, it's pus in that wound. Matthew 23, 25, 26 say, you clean up the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. And then he says, you blind Pharisee, first clean up the inside of the cup and the dish, then the outside will be clean. How many of us, can I get a show of hands, have ever hand washed a dish or a cup? Can I get a show of hands? That's good. See, we clean up our appearance, our appearance. We clean up our attire. We clean up the way we walk and talk. This is the outside of the cup. But Jesus just said the only way the outside can be clean first, you got to clean up the inside. Oh, I'm going to give an analogy of a cup. Have you ever seen a cup that you was trying to wash? And it was, you cleaned up the outside and you looked at it, it was clean. But when you looked on the inside, you seen a speck. 
in the corner of that cup or that glass. Oh, in that speck that was in that corner of that glass, you had to get in there to dig it out. You just couldn't wash it out. It didn't want to rinse out. You had to get in there and dig that speck out. God wants to clean up the inside of your cup. Oh, there's a speck of no accountability on the inside of that cup that needs to be a clean out. There's a speck of not willing to be submitted on the inside of that cup. There's a speck of pride up in that cup in the corner that needs to be cleaned out. There's a speck of stubbornness and not wanting to listen to nobody on the inside of that cup. I'm talking about the speck when you turn that cup on the side. It's right down in there, but it won't come out. You got to work it out. Amen. There's a speck of low self-esteem, low self-worth on the inside of that cup. There's a speck of bending the rules and not want to do it the way it's supposed to be done on the inside of that cup. There's a speck of anguish and bitterness and unforgiveness on the inside of that cup. There's a speck of feeling unloved and living in doubt on the inside of that cup. There's a speck of oppression, depression, and suppression on the inside of that cup that does not want to come out. There's a speck of hopelessness, helplessness on the inside of that cup that does not want to come out. There's a speck of guilt and condemnation on the inside of that cup that does not want to come out. Oh my God. There's a speck of your lifestyle on the inside of that cup. Are y'all with me on the inside of that cup? This speck or stain is so deep that God is going to have to dig deep to remove this. God is going to have to dig deep and carry you through a process to get it out. God is going to have to dig deep to wash it out. You know you got that rag in your hand. You got to put it in and you got to work it. You got to dig deep. That's how God's got to get that speck out. What's that speck? That's what God wants today. God wants to touch that place. That speck has been there so long. Woo! That God is going to have to dig deep to remove it. The speck is on the inside. That speck has been there so long that even when you tried to remove it on your own, you couldn't get it out. So God is going to have to go in and remove it. That speck has been there for so long that when you talk to people, y'all couldn't work it out or walk it out. Only God is going to have to go in and get that out. That speck has been there so long that you're going to have to pray it out. You're going to have to fast it out. You're going to have to walk it out by faith and not by sight. It's been there for so long. That's what God is after. I'm not talking about what happened yesterday. I'm talking about when it happened way back then and it's still there. That speck has been there so long that when somebody touch it, pastor always say that cavity, but I want to say that that wound is so fresh. That wound is so tender. When somebody touch it, oh, you feel the pain of the freshness. God wants that. You have to allow God to work on you internally. There comes a time when we have to learn to allow the spirit to guide us on how to speak to dead and dry places. We have to speak to our situation by allowing God to direct what we say. In Jeremiah 18, 2 through 4, God said to Jeremiah, go down to the potter's house. So he went down to the potter's house. He was making a pot from clay. This was the potter. But there was something wrong with the pot. So the potter used the clay to make another pot. With his hands, God want to put his hands on you. He shaped. With his hands, he molded. With his hands, he formed. With his hands, he had to change it. With his hands, he wanted to transform it. With his hands, he wanted to alter it. This was God. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. When God puts his hand on you, he wants to change some things in you. When he puts his hands on you, he wants to renew some things in you. When he puts some hands on you, he is trying to get you back to your original condition. Not the condition that you know, but the place that he knows you should be. You have to allow God's hand on your life. You have to get on the potter's wheel. Oh, that's a hard place to go. Because you have to be fully submitted. You have to all the way surrender. You have to be ten toes in. Amen? You have to become clay. You and I in the hands of the potter. The Lord asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? You alone know the answer to that. 
The Lord is asking us today, can these bones live? I declare the decree that because we all are in the spirit, our response will be, you alone know the answer to that. Oh, let's have a conversation with the Lord like this today. The Lord is asking us, I know you are in a place. And not only are you in that place, but you have been there so long, can you come out of what you were in? What is your response? You alone, Lord, know the answer for that. This is us talking to God. The Lord is asking, it seems like you are in a hopeless situation. Can you overcome that? Oh, what's your response to the Lord? You alone, oh God, you know the answer to that. The Lord is asking you, can your marriage be restored? Oh, this is what God is asking us. And what's your response? You alone, oh God, you know the answer answer to that. Oh, can I get past this unforgiveness? The Lord is asking you that, but your response would be, you alone, you know the answer to that. The reason you have to give, you have to answer in such a manner because you are saying that, Lord, you are in control. Even if you think you can answer, you don't answer it. You want to answer in the spirit of the Lord and not your flesh. Amen. The Lord is asking, your life is dysfunctional. It looks like you got it all together on the outside or you're going to pull it together. This is what God is asking us and what's our response. You alone, you know the answer to that. The Lord is asking your children are not listening. Will they become obedient? This is what the Lord is asking. What's your response? You alone, oh God, you know the answer to that. The Lord is asking, there are people in your family that may have hurt you. There are people in your family that you may have hurt. And the Lord is asking you, can you forgive them and will they forgive you? And your answer to that is, you alone, oh God, you know the answer to that. This response moves God. See, when we do it in the spirit and not in our flesh, when we do it the way God wants it done and not the way we think it should be done, when we do God's will according to his plans for our life and not by our own desires, God can move us to the next level. So if you find yourself in a place and you feel like you, listen, you feel like you, listen, you feel like you are giving it all you got, but you still stuck. When you look around, you're not progressing. You still stuck. When you look around, you're procrastinating. You still stuck. When you look around, you're not gaining no ground. Maybe, perhaps, I'm just saying, maybe, perhaps, it is you and it's not the spirit of the Lord that you're trying to follow. God instructed Ezekiel. After Ezekiel responded and told God, oh, sovereign God, it is you alone who knows that. To speak a prophetic message, God told Ezekiel to speak those things not as though they were. To speak a prophetic message, speak it prophetically. When I look at the situation and assess it, my kids are acting up. But when you say speak to it prophetically, Lord, I thank you that my kids are walking in obedience. When I look at my husband and he don't want to conform to what's going on, when he say speak the prophetic message, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that my husband is doing what you have called him to do. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we are going in the place that you call us to go. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that our marriage is lining up according to your will. When people look at my marriage, I know it looks like all hell is breaking loose. But when I pray the prayer, speak the word, I'm going to say, Lord, I thank you. When people look at this marriage, they see that your kingdom has come. I thank you, Lord. Everything that we do. In the word of God, when Jesus said, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Everything we do is for the kingdom to come. And when the kingdom come, his kingdom is advancing. So when you're moving and when you're shaking, are you advancing God's kingdom or is your will be being done? See, when you have your agenda, but God has an assignment, then if you're doing what you want to do, you're not doing me too. I'm speaking is not advancing God's kingdom. Everything that we do, when they look at us as parents, can they see that God's kingdom is being advanced? When they look at our marriage, can they see that God's kingdom is being advanced? When they look at us as students, can they see that God's kingdom is being advanced? When they look at us as business owners, entrepreneurs, CEOs, CFOs, vice presidents, presidents of companies, when they look at us, can they see that God's kingdom is being advanced? Everything that we do, his will be done. His ways be followed. His word prevail. His wisdom 
is trusted. You got to speak to it prophetically. The Lord will instruct you no matter what it looks like. Ezekiel was sitting in the middle of a valley. Ezekiel was in a place of no hope. And the question was asked, can these bones live? The bones represented the people. The bones represented a hopeless and a helpless nation. The bones were representative of a people who had lost their way. The bone represented a people who was hard-pressed and was on the verge of being crushed or had been crushed. The bones represented the people who were perplexed and had fallen into disparity. The bones represented a people who were struck down and they had been destroyed. The bones represented a people who were persecuted and they were abandoned. But my next point is point number three. It's in his presence. When you are hard pressed on every side, when all hell is breaking loose, when you got Pharaoh's army on your back and the Red Sea in front of you, you don't know which way to turn. Everything is coming at you from the north, the south, the east, and the west, and you don't be crushed, then that means that you are in his presence. When you are perplexed, when you don't know what to do, how you're going to come out of what you're in, when you don't know how you're going to speak to that situation, when it don't seem like there's no light in his darkness, when it seems as if you are lost and there's no hope, when it seems that you are wretched and you can't be saved, oh, you are perplexed, you can't figure it out, you can't think it out, you can't call nobody on the phone, you can't call Tyrone to get an answer, oh, and you're still standing, then guess what? You weren't left into despair. That looks like that he you are in his presence. When you find yourself, everything that you have done to do what is right in the eyes of the Lord, and you're being persecuted for righteousness sake, they are talking about you. They are slandering your name. They are assassinating your character and you're still standing. He said you was persecuted but not abandoned. You were not abandoned because you and I were in his presence. When you get struck down, when you look back at your past and you know you shouldn't even be here today, but you know it was by his grace. You know it was by his mercy. You know it's by his sovereignty that you are still standing that you got the breath of life in you and you didn't get struck down. They did not kill you. That bullet did not take you out. You're not doing life in prison. Then you had to be in his presence. Oh, today we're going to stand in the presence and the power of the Spirit of God. Those are places in our lives that have been off limits. Those places in our lives that we have not touched. Those places are in our lives that when we begin to agree or when we begin to address, when we begin to attack, the pain and the scars run so deep, no matter how long ago when it happened, the wound is still as painful today as when it happened on yesterday. It is in God that we move and we live and we have our being. It sounds like you are in his presence. See, when he is the potter and you are the clay, when you allow the hand of God to come upon your life, when you allow that no matter who you are, where you are, or how long you have been there, if you feel like you have not arrived, and you allow yourself to go through a process, go through a breaking process, go through a crushing process, go through a pressing process, then this requires that you be in his presence. Oh, can you get on the potter's wheel and let him shape your life, let him touch your life, let him break your life and rebuild your life. Oh, let him lose you on that wheel and then bring you back in then it takes you to be in his presence. When you say, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me, this will take you into his presence. When those who open the Lord shall have a renewed strength and mount up with wings like an eagle and you run and not grow weary and when you walk after you ran and you ran after you mounted, and you didn't grow weary, you have to be in his presence. This is what being in his presence looked like. God wants to open us up. Trace that wound. Trace that scar so that we can face it 
And then when we face that internal wound, when we face that internal speck that's on the inside of our cup, in order to erase it or remove it or deal with it or get it out, then it's going to require us to be in his presence. When you get in his presence, you will know that you have had an encounter with God. When you get in his presence, you will come face to face with self and you will come face to face with God. We have to come face to face with self before we come face to face with God. And we try to go face to face with God before we come face to face with self. See, the reason you do it like this, you want to look at self and you want to know what can I bring to the Lord that he can cut away, clip away. What can I bring to God that he can remove out of me that's keeping me from being who he has called me to be? And when you go face to face with self, then God will meet you while you're coming face to face with self. And then when God stepped in, like Jacob, and got a hold of God, he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. You will not let him go until he heals you. You will not let him go until he brings deliverance into your life. Oh, you will not let him go until he truly sets you free. You will not let go until he restores you. You will not let him go until he breaks through into your life. When you get in his presence, you will have a not let him go attitude. God will make you whole, just not just heal you. Do you want to be made whole and not just be delivered? Oh, do you want to be made whole and not just set free? Be made whole. The woman with the issue of blood, he said, woman, thy faith has made you whole. Oh, do you know what the difference is in being made whole? Let me break it down to you. See, when God said, by his stripes, you are healed. You have to accept the fact that you are healed. Jesus won the victory on the cross. He said it is finished. Even though he said that, have you accepted the fact that it is finished. This is you and I accepting in our mind that you are healed, that you are delivered, that you are set free. So even though God forgives you, oh, as Sister Madeline, Pastor Madeline prayed earlier, will you accept God's forgiveness? Even though God restored you, will you accept in your mind that it you have been restored? And we always hear pastors say, you can't live saved from a pre-salvation condition. Basically what he's saying, you have to have a paradigm shift in your mind. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Has things become new or are you still trying to do it from that old way, from that old mindset, from that old mentality? God wants you and I to be in his presence. God wants to make you and I whole. When you are made whole, woman, be healed. Thy faith is healed. You woman be made whole. You all be made whole. You have to accept the fact in your mind that God has set you free, that God has delivered you, that God has healed you, that God has restored you, that God has taken your life and broken it down piece by piece, carried you through a process, took you from Egypt through the wilderness, and now you're ready to enter into the promised land. See, if you never allow yourself to accept the fact, accept the reality that you are whole, that you are truly free, you can never walk in true freedom. You have to welcome God into them dry places. We have to accept in our mind that we are healed. And then when we accept it in our mind, our body will begin to align itself. I, w I was, uh, last year sometime, quick testimony, I was in the hospital with my wife. And I got on the elevator and something interesting spoke to me. On the elevator, there was a sign, and it said, quiet, healing is in process. And I had never seen that before. 
You know when you at home resting and you got kids, you want them to be quiet so you can get the fullness of your rest. Because if noise is being made, then your rest will be interrupted. Then you will not be fully functional. Now let's switch rest out. When you are in a healing process, when you are in the deliverance process, when you are in the process of going into freedom, you need to quiet everything down around you. Because if there is an interruption or a distraction, then you will not get the fullness of your healing. See, by his stripes, you are healed. But the healing is a process. You are delivered, but deliverance is a process. You are walking in, you are free, but the freedom is a process. That's the part where we do our part and we walk it out. But if we allow noise, if we allow the chatter to continue, if we do not allow ourselves to get in a secret place or a quiet place or in a long place, if we do not take that time to ourselves and allow ourselves to quiet everything around us, then your healing perhaps can be interrupted. Your deliverance perhaps could be interrupted. Your freedom perhaps could be interrupted. So when you're trying to get to a place that you know God is leading you, then you might want to quiet things down around you. You might want to reprioritize some things so that you can get the fullness of your healing. You might want to pre right, reprioritize some things so you can get the fullness of your deliverance. You might want to pre reprioritize some things so you can walk in the fullness of your restoration. But if we keep the noise, the chatter, and everything going, it will hinder our healing. It will block our deliverance. It will stagnate us walking into freedom. We already have victory through Christ Jesus. We have to accept it. We know that he is a present help in a time of need. We know that God will never leave us nor forsake us. Oh, we got to welcome God into the dry places so that you may be made whole. God wants to get into that place in your life that's been off limits. He wants to sit on the throne of your heart so that you can allow God to reach out and touch that place. He wants you to call on him and make your request be made known to God. In order to do that, you're going to have to be in his presence. It says when we worship him, we must do it in spirit and in truth. But when you ask, you got to do it in spirit and in truth. When you seek God out, you got to do it in spirit and in truth. And when you knock at the heart of God, can we do it in spirit and in truth? That's going to require us to be in his presence. Amen. God is sovereign. His mercies endures forever. He wants us to enter into his presence. The presence of the Lord is sacred. Things happen in his presence. Peace will rise up in his presence. Storms in your life will cease in his presence. Have you ever been in a storm and you said, peace be still, and the storm stopped? But then it's another type of storm when you start growing in God. God will allow the storm to continue to rage, and even though you're in the middle of that storm, he will give you peace while the storm is raging. Have you ever been in a place like that? You have to be in his presence. To understand. In his presence all flesh must bow down. In his presence he will restore what the canker worm ate up. All in his presence. Can we go ahead and please stand to our feet. Today, 
God first wants us all to know that he loves us. And God wants each and every one of us to deeply, deeply search our lives, search our hearts, and allow his presence in that place. Today, if there's anyone in here who does not or has not accepted Christ, our Lord, as your personal Lord and Savior, the altar is open. If God came right now, does everyone believe that he is your Savior? Today, as I open up the altar, God wants to carry you and I in some places. And the only way that we're going to get there is if we allow the spirit of the living God to take us into that place. God wants you to open yourself up so that no matter what your condition may be, no matter where you are spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, God wants you and I, if in that place, if you feel like that you need a touch from God, he wants you to bring that place to him. If there's a dry place in our lives and we need this a touch from God to reach into that place and restore us to that original condition, that place could be fathers, wanting to know can we really connect with our children that place can be fathers really want to be effective in the lives of our children that place can be fathers affirming our children and you just want to be strengthened as a father I'm asking that you come down to the altar If you're in a place as mothers and you know that you've done everything that you can in your strength, you've done everything that you could by your might, and you see that you're not getting the results that you want and you're ready to go further. You're ready to do it according to his will for your life. You want a God to touch you so that you can do it, not in your strength, but in God's strength. You want God to take control so that his will may be done and not your own. Or if you're just a person and you just want to draw strength from the Lord. And you feel weary and you've been on the battlefield. You want God to do something in your life that has never been done before. You are ready to step out of the boat because he said, come. You're ready to step out of the boat and trust him at his word. 
when you stay, make this step of faith, when you step out on this word, you're going to go into places that you have never gone before. You're going to do things that has never been done before. You are going to see in a way that you've never seen it before. He said, come.